Hi, this is Amy Conkley. Um, my business name is A Taste for Wellness, and today I'm going to demonstrate how to make one of my favorite ferments that I've ever made, ever learned how to make, as part of the Fermentationist Certification Program. And I'm super excited to be almost done with that. Just like I'm almost done with the remainder of my last batch of this ferment. It's a sweet potato ferment. And the, the book that I got this recipe from is called Fermented Vegetables. The author of this book is a husband and wife. Last name is Shockey. And this is a book that you're going to want to check out. But when I was flipping through this book, um, they list all of the different vegetables. So the ferments are based on vegetables. If you got 10,000 green beans, here's how to ferment green beans. If you got a lot of cabbage, here's how you make some sauerkraut. Well, when I stumbled across the sweet potatoes, something caught my eye about the recipe because it's called West African Sweet Potato Ferment. And why that really caught my eye is that my best friend is engaged to be married to a man from West Africa. And I just believe that food can really connect us to other people and to other places in the world. And then when I made this ferment and tasted how wonderful it is, I knew for sure that it was a keeper recipe, just like he is a keeper for my girlfriend. So here's how we make this recipe. I've prepared all the ingredients. Um, it's some sweet potatoes that I've um, sliced very thinly. Um, I'm going to add the other ingredients to it. It's very simple. So it's about half of a green pepper. A thinly sliced onion, about half of an onion. Three dry tomatoes. So I just took sun-dried tomatoes and sliced them up very finely. I'm going to put all those in there. Um, I've chopped up two cloves of garlic and about half of a tablespoon of ginger, grated very finely. And then some more magic happens when we add some seasoning. We're going to add whole coriander and a little bit of cayenne. And the flavor of this thing, I have to tell you, is it's absolutely divine. So we're going to mix all of these things together. And I have clean hands, and this is how I like to work with my food. So we just mix this all up by hand. And then when the onions are kind of stuck together, I just sort of break those up. Just want it to be well mixed. Um, you might think that the cayenne pepper is going to be all stuck in one spot, but what's going to happen when I add the salt, which is an important part of fermenting, um, is this is going to start to make a liquid brine. So water is going to come right out of the sweet potatoes. You're going to be surprised. I didn't even know sweet potatoes could do this. So in this recipe, I think I had about three pounds of sweet potatoes, and I'm going to start with a tablespoon of salt which sounds like a lot of salt, but in fermentation, salt is a super important ingredient. Um, first off, the salt will bring the water out of the vegetables. I just have to keep working this with my hands. Um, salt will add flavor, of course. And then salt also does the very important step of protecting the vegetables from spoilage as they um, bacteria begin to grow and produce lactic acid. So, salt is an amazing ingredient because it does so many things in this ferment. And this is beginning to get moist. Um, I'm not sure if it will show up on the camera quite yet. And it might take a little bit more salt. So, um, what I do is I just take a little piece of the sweet potato and I taste it. And I want it to taste salty, but not crazy salty, but a little bit more salty than I have. So I'm going to add another maybe half of a tablespoon. And we just keep working it with our hands. I don't know if you can see it getting moist, but I can definitely feel the ingredients releasing their moisture. So I haven't added any water to this. The water or the liquid that's coming out is just in the veggies themselves. I'm throwing a few pieces of sweet potato around the kitchen too. That's always good. All right. 
So once it reaches this point where it's juicing a fair amount, we are ready to pack it into our fermentation vessel. And for this one, I'm just going to use this glass jar that I have. So in order to pack this, just lift this up. And I begin to put the vegetables in there. Maybe not quite such a big handful next time. And as I'm putting them in there, I just pack it down with my fist. The idea here is to get all of the juice coming up over the vegetables. Now the sweet potato brine won't come up and be, you know, a lot of liquid over the brine. So then what we need to do is our last step is to weight this down. What I have found works well for this is to use a plastic bag with a zip top. And I put that plastic bag in the top of my fermentation container. And I'm going to add water to it and that will hold down my ferment. So it kind of expands into the space to completely cover the top. The only thing about this step you want to be really careful with is that this is not going to leak. So you want to be sure you close it. I just push down on it. And this is now ready to sit. Looks like all the veggies are under the brine. This is now ready to sit for 7 to 20 days. At day 7 I can taste it and see if it's starting to get sour. And I find that the longer I leave it, the more the flavor develops and um, it gets even tastier. And that's how you make West African sweet potato ferment.